Hi everyone. Throughout their Worlds campaign, Heads Up Team Defense played a big role in Clapham's strategy. In their powerful matchup against Ring of Fire, UltiWorld were kind enough to film this sequence of play from their drone cam. In this video, we're going to take a detailed look at Clapham's defense, discuss what they did well, and what mistakes they made. This sequence of play is instructive, as the mistakes Clapham make here are pretty common among teams trying to add more switching and surrounding to their defense. So let's see what we can learn from the defense of the WCC Open Division bronze medalists. The sequence starts in this static position with a forehand force and everyone on Clapham marking 1 to 1. Ring immediately reset the disc and hit a breakside under to Mitchell whilst reforming their stack. As this is happening, Hillman and Rowledge realize their players are inactive and both move towards the open lane. Hillman's poach stops the throw to Fisher and Ring reset the disc again. Clapham forced more reset passes by staying tight downfield, and after a few buzz switches between Hillman and Amala, Ring finally finds an upfield pass to Osgar. But wait a minute, where did Osgar come from? As Fairfax and Gutrohannis were working the disc around the back, Rowledge switched with Slaughter to pick up Osgar, who was running deep. Rowledge starts following Osgar under, but pulls up because of the flash poach from Swan Thompson, who then backs out of the poach, leaving Osgar wide open. Swan Thompson should either have committed to switching onto Osgar early, or stayed with Williams. As Osgar catches the disc, we see a 3v2 in the middle of the field and Clapham switch to stop either player being thrown to. As the stall count rises, Mitchell cuts back for Osgar and gets bumped by Armala, who correctly doesn't call pick, but also doesn't switch with Swan Thompson, allowing the disc to be reset. This was a missed opportunity for Clapham to cause some serious problems as Ring had no good options available. It also wasn't a difficult switch to recognise and execute, as both Clapham players were looking towards each other and could see the play developing. After this missed switch, Clapham become a bit disorganised and fail to capitalise on some inefficiencies from Ring. In this position, Ring have two clustered inactive players, two players crossing over in an inactive space, and only one threatening cut being developed. But even this undercut from Fisher will only become a threat after a few more lateral passes in the backfield, and it can easily be switched onto by Garner. The only other potential threat is a deep cut from Kutra Hannes, who now has separation from Amala due to the previous missed switch. But Slaughter is in a good position to switch onto that cut, and Amla is in a good position to take Lanier, who is coming under. But what's Hillman doing in this position? As Amala was recovering from going around Mitchell, Hillman recognised that Kutra Hannes was going to get free upline and moved to cover the option, but didn't communicate with Amala, perhaps expecting him to automatically take Yannick. A few moments later, Hillman does point back to Yannick, but it's too late. Armler and Hillman are both trailing Gutrohannis deep. Slaughter could have switched onto Gutrohannis, but kept following Lanier under into a non-threatening part of the field. Fortunately for Clapham, Ring were not in a good position to throw this deep shot. While this is happening, Garner also chooses to keep following Williams, who is moving towards several Clapham players and into an inactive part of the field, rather than taking Yannick, who is in a more threatening position. Yannick ultimately gets wide open against one of the best defences in the world by largely standing still in the middle of the field. What a player. To Clapham's credit, they don't allow Yannick any immediate options. As Armler is closing in on Yannick, he misses another switch with Swan Thompson. Yannick tries to throw and go with Williams, but Garner and Armler combine to stop the return pass. Unfortunately, they both continue to follow Yannick, and Hillman also moves across to cover the deep cut. Clapham have now triple committed on Yannick, leaving Rowledge 2v1 on Williams and Osgar, and Gutra Hannes free coming under on the left side of the field. Ideally, Swan Thompson and Armler would have switched, which would have given Yannick much less space to throw and go into. As things played out, Garner and Armler needed to communicate to either both switch or both stay. They shouldn't both be following Yannick deep. Garner does go back to Mark Williams once he sees that Armler is also following Yannick, but Williams has already swung the disc to a wide open Gutra Hannes on the break side. It was Hillman's decision to leave Gutra Hannes that allowed him to get so free, but this decision demonstrates Hillman's incredible awareness and ability to read the play. Going back to Yannick first catching the disc unmarked, Hillman is watching Yannick the whole time Gutra Hannes is cutting deep, and as soon as Yannick throws the fake, Hillman turns around knowing that Gutra Hannes is no longer a threat. He then lingers in the deep space to switch onto Yannick, pointing at the now unmarked Gutra Hannes as he does so. Unfortunately for Clapham, the cascade of switches required to recover from Hillman's early switch off of Gutra Hannes requires a level of teamwork and communication that is rarely seen in Elite Ultimate. Hillman needed to make Mikhail aware of the unmarked Gutra Hannes as early as possible. 
McHale would have then had to call for Swan Thompson to cover a deep cut from Fisher, and Swan Thompson would have had to pull either Garner or Armler over to Mark Mitchell, with the other staying on Williams. Fortunately, Hillman had anticipated that Gutrohannis wouldn't receive the disc in an immediately threatening position, so Clapham could recover even without executing an advanced cascade of switches. McHale makes the right choice to stay deep with Fisher, rather than make a late switch onto Gutrohannis, as this would have given Fisher a clear line to the end zone with an unmarked Williams on the disc. As the throw goes up to Gutrohannis, we again see a small flash poach from Swan Thompson and Armler running past three of his teammates to put the force on. It would have been much more efficient for Armler to push McHale onto Gutrohannis, but McHale does well to pick up Mitchell as Swan Thompson turns around after the flash poach. Swan Thompson then finds Yannick, who Hillman left, because once again he realised there were more threatening options to mark out in either Mitchell or Lanier. Hillman and Slaughter then switch and switch again, and Clapham have weathered the storm. They once again look organised, forcing Ring to reset the disc and reform their stack. Gutrohannis busts up line and Garner bites on the force, which allows Williams to throw an easy around backhand to give Ring a power position with Yannick attacking the end zone. Slaughter's at the back of the stack and can see that Swan Thompson is going to get beat to the crossfield deep shot, so starts the move to cover the option. Swan Thompson sees this and leaves Yannick to pick up Lanier, but tragically, Slaughter doesn't commit to the switch and Yannick is left wide open in the end zone to receive the score. As is often the case with switching, the final throw to the end zone makes it look like Clapham's defence was poor and ineffective, but this is a very surface level analysis. Overall, Clapham's defence in this point was very good, and they were only a few small mistakes away from causing Ring some serious problems. Both of the really important missed switches, first between Armela and Swan Thompson, and later between Slaughter and Swan Thompson, could have been avoided by early, decisive communication from one, or ideally both, players. And this is something that Clapham have clearly practiced, as evidenced by the communication in many of the successful switches that happened during the point, although they have a long way to go, with plenty of examples of late or no communication. Switching is most effective when every player on the team is actively looking to switch as often and as early as possible. Players should also be actively communicating with the rest of the team using their voice and gesticulation, not just eye contact and body language. For more info on how to play the style of defense, check out our How to Play Flex playlist, and in particular, our How to Talk to Your Team on Defense video. For drills and session plans to work on these skills with your team, check out the training tier of our Patreon. Thanks for watching, we'll see you again soon.